Hello and welcome everybody. I'm going to do a video about Force Curves, finally. You guys have asked me for a long time and now it's about time to do it. So I'm going to take you two places because I can do it here at my desk. This is nothing, yeah, I can show you in theory, but the question is why? Why are they the way they are? I'm going to take you to Vienna Central Park, it's actually called Stadtpark. This is where we live. And I'm going to take you to the rowing club where there's a buy roller. Follow me. Let's go. That's actually part of my desk now. It's where we change diapers. Well, part of family life. Accelerating a swing is pretty similar to accelerating a boat. What I did on the playground was basically trying to add momentum all the way until my motion capacity of my hands, body, was gone. The same with the stroke in the boat. At the catch, I still have a lot of motion capacity left and I try to keep it so to keep the upper body all the way until the finish so I can still add momentum, increasing momentum, because the boat or the swing is going faster. And that's the entire thing. Force curve expresses the momentum you transfer onto something you would like to accelerate. It's that simple. So if you accelerate a swing and I still have the same amount of momentum, although the swing is traveling so fast, hey, I've done a great job adding more momentum without looking goofy. Same thing in the boat. If I still can add the same amount of momentum as just after the catch, boy, I have done something right. The boat is traveling faster and faster and faster and faster, and I did a great job of accelerating without overusing my body or overspending energy. I need to conserve as much as possible. All right, after playground where you see where you know how a swing is being accelerated with the last bit of contact still trying to accelerate without excessive you know body motion, we try to use that same principle now uh, in the boat slash on a bi roller, which is built exactly the same way. All right, guys, the audio quality here is not going to be excellent. This is a prototype S1 Pro. This beast is going to. 2,400 Newton meter transmission. We're trying something new. It's louder than the usual bio rowers because of a couple tweaks we're testing here. So bear with me, the audio is gonna be it's gonna sound like, whoa, it's pretty loud. All right, I got my phone here. I'm switching to the signals mode. Uh, you got two sets of lines here. And the first one are the angled position curves. So this would, the one on the top, you see if I move my right hand forward, the right line on the, on the top drops. So this is the position of my right hand, and the same on the left, so if I move my left hand forward, the green line will drop. And the idea is, of course, to have it somewhat synchronized, but um, what I'm looking for as a coach is, uh, if guys tend to stop at the catch. You know, a lot of people rush forward, wait, 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 you see the line is running flat, so this is a problem. I don't want that. The line I'm looking for right now, however, is the bottom line, and this is the four scripts. Force curves is really force in Newton I put in over a timeline. I have my left hand and my right hand. So far so good. Now let's come to the structure of force curve. What should it look like? The ideal force curve should be, ha, should have a soft, soft entry because you don't want to load up the blade too quickly, especially if you have vandal fluids. And then I would quickly want to reach a plateau and then I want to have a smooth exit. So I don't want a square. I do want a soft entry. I want somewhat of a plateau around this point right there. Why? Because right there, the oars are in the 90 degree position towards the boat. This is where I have the best possible momentum. This is where the blades actually point forward. So everything I do is like, Whoa! really gets me going. But not only here. I want to make sure that uh, from this part to this part right there, I'm, I'm, I'm having somewhat of a plateau. So you may ask, why is it that we don't want a force curve that peaks towards the finish? So we would have whoop, most of the force peak towards the finish. That would be maximum acceleration. For two reasons not. First of all, it takes a while 
before you can transfer momentum onto the passive part that is being accelerated. So you have to have a force in, a, in, in effect earlier than that because there's a lag time. Secondly, um, you don't want to accelerate the boat too much because of hydrodynamics. You know, try to put your blade, put your blade in the water, just your hand, and try to ex move it very slowly through the water. No problem, no resistance. But then try to increase force rapidly. You get a lot more resistance instantly, and that's the effect we use for rowing. But the same effect that helps us to row because we can actually anchor that shovel of a blade in the water and it will sit somewhat still if we do it right. The same effect actually also stops us because our boat is in exactly the same water so it's subject to the same effects and that effect is hydrodynamic resistance that increases the more you change speed which means the more you accelerate the more resistance you will get. So the conclusion is you want to create acceleration but you don't want to over accelerate in order to keep the resistance that is building up within, within the water to minimum. So this is why a late peaking force curve is not effective, but a plateau shaped force curve, which is the gradual acceleration we need and the boat can take in terms of energy input to speed output is still in a good relation. If we had it the other way around, you know, all the peak towards the end, or we would actually over peak, or you know, the, the input of force would be too much, then we put in a lot more effort than we get out in terms of speed. This may sound theoretical, but it's you can try it out, it's overly simple. This is why I think it's plain stupid to have um, 10 hard strokes within a race. It doesn't do anything but make, uh, make, make athletes overly tired. It's completely useless from an energy point of view. It's about the dumbest thing you can possibly do within the race. Now, we have to differentiate between steady state rowing and race based rowing. And I think what many people mistake, they, they set out for a nice force curve in steady state. But in steady state, you can basically fake anything you want because you just compensate. The interesting thing is, what do your force curves look like when you are in a race situation? So stroke rate 28 to 40, 44, um, 52 to Romanians in the 8 last year. And this is the interesting part. So I always try to get the force curves right for high speed rowing and then translate this technique into steady state rowing. So the force curves in steady state might actually look a bit off, but they helped me then to generate the right type of force curves for my race pace and beyond these you know, speeds. And there are a couple of principles we have to follow. The first principle to get the force curves right is to understand which way the inboards are going. And a lot of you guys are doing this silly linear earth thing because there's nothing else available, but this blocks you from having the right mobility in the shoulders and the understanding. And this is what makes the transition to the boat so difficult every year. Look, if, if, you, had, if you had a pencil right there, and this would be a sheet of paper, now, what would this line look like? Exactly, it's a semicircle. It's almost half of a circle. Same thing here, semicircle. It's also true for sweep row. It's a semicircle. Now, our bodies have to move differently if we want to um, accelerate a boat that can only be propelled with two semicircles. That linear thing just doesn't work anymore here. So we need two things at the catch. We need to make sure that we, so that we have force vectors that are pointing in the right direction. Now, force vector means nothing but if that inboard is going this way, pull this way. Don't pull straight. It's not going to help you to have the right force curves. You will not accelerate the boat the most optimal way. Because if I pull straight, and the oars going this direction, it's not going to feel right, it's not going to be effective. How do you do this? Stay mobile on the shoulders. If you're too stiff, this way. So you roll absolutely just down correctly. You're fighting against the boat. You have to be somewhat loose and relaxed here. So what I mean by this is very simple. When you go forward, make sure that you get somewhat of a pre-tension here in, in the triceps and in the lats. And pre-tension is nothing but pull, it, pull, pull a bit on it. So when you go forward, back, 
you're ready. And there should be no uh, shock through your body. That's not effective. So to catch them, just make sure you actually, you don't really have to work inwards effectively. This is not effective too. You cannot provide full force and then do this one. It's not effective. But you have to, you have to be open enough to let it happen. There is no better way of, of putting it. But this I mean, stay relaxed. That you, well, when you, once you, once your legs start to transfer all the force through the body, that this is possible. That well, this is what you're aiming for. You're not trying to pull straight because if you try to pull straight, your upper body will go up, and you will do a lot of weird things. So, for you want to make sure your hands can't go together. This is probably the only straight line it has now, then it's going up over here. Second, legs first. Leave the upper body where it is. If you do this, your hands, you see this? Go up. If the hands move upward, you cannot possibly have a force curve that is efficient because the only thing that propels the boat is this, not this. So make sure you add nothing vertical as you're pulling horizontal. Three, make sure you leave your upper body to this point right there where the legs are almost running out of motion capacity. Which means now you want to oh, use that upper body weight, which you can't remember around anyway. Why not make use of that? So hold, hold, push, use the upper body weight. No arms. Remember the swing? You want to add momentum once the swing has accelerated so you make sure you don't lose connection between you, the accelerator, and the object you want to accelerate. The object you want to accelerate is the boat. So if you use your upper body now, and that would be the time where you actually have to use oh, the swing, but it's not there anymore because you already come to this position with an upper body that is straight, so there's no there's not much room where it can go, and this is a mistake I see in a lot of video analysis I do, then you're basically prone to lose connection. So you have a lot of empty body motion right there. I hope this makes sense. What I want is straight, 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 hold, hold, hold. And now, it's a small pivot. It's not a lot, and it comes from the lower part of your spine. You don't have to be perfectly straight like this. No, it's enough to Hold the upper body and then use the upper body right there. And you see my four steps are actually going up towards the finish. Number four, towards the finish, use the arms to help the upper body. So it's not legs, upper body, and then arms alone. Because this way, the four steps look this way. You have a double, it's like a cane. So that's not effective as well. You want to build momentum, not lose it. Your stroke does not have to be extra long. You know, most athletes have a stroke that's long enough anyway. You want to see this, you just go to the rowers mode and you have the 104 to 108 degree stroke length right now. That's more than enough. We don't need more than that. Let's go back to sequence. Now, what should force curves look like? Well, I'm interested in race pins. So this, this would be ideal, but it's unrealistic. So this is what force curves should look like, my ideal. But the more watts you get, the more difficult it's going to become. Force curves start to become worse towards the end of a race. Now if you have a front-loaded drive athlete and uh, a back-loaded drive athlete sitting in a double, it won't work. You know, on an old-style erg, you can pull, I don't know, world record times. It's still going to be useless, they're not going to be fast to the boat. It's better to have two weaker athletes who have congruent force curves who are fast. And sometimes, that's the interesting thing about force curves, you can have two athletes who simply have a front loaded drive, so they, they have a, a curve that looks a bit like this. Yeah, exactly, front loaded drive curve. If both of them are all four, or all eight are doing this, it is faster than two athletes who have 
different force curves. If all two, four, or eight would have plateau force curve, this would be the ideal. Second best, similar force curves, um, beat from the back loaded. So, no.